Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in October, which isn't many books. Um, let me see, one, two, I read six books and I think, yeah, like most of them were very small or graphic novels. So I just didn't read much. I was really trying to film a lot of content and stuff for Halloween and that. Stuff that I didn't even get up in time, which will be coming um, in November. But um, yeah, so that means I fell behind with reading and I really try want to try and pick up the pace. I have been super bad already coming in to November. But um, let's discuss what I read in October. So the first book that I read in October was The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This was a library book. I think the majority of these books are all library books. Um, I'll tell you otherwise. But um, this book was absolutely stunning. It is one of my favourite books now, um, without a doubt. Um, it is just so... I don't know, it's just really wonderful. So it's basically about a man. I don't want to give too much away, obviously, either. But it's about a man who returns to his childhood kind of area, his home and his neighbours. And in his neighbours' um, house, at the back of it, there is a, like a pond. And he goes there and he sits down and then he starts remembering things from his childhood. So... That's basically what you um, are following. You're basically him as a kid and what kind of happened in his life at that time. And it is just so well done. It is absolute, I think, perfect. I just absolutely love it. I love the magical elements in it. I love the whimsical feeling it has. I love the witches and how they're portrayed. And I just love... Um, everything about it and I love the sense of nostalgia it gives you even though um like there's I really can't compare my childhood to his at all like I don't think any of us can but I do know those feelings as when you're a kid and the way that it's described um it's just you just remember it but anyway I highly recommend this I gave it five stars I absolutely love it I will be purchasing it for myself because I just instantly wanted to reread it as soon as I finished it um I think it is young adult I'm not sure of that there is I will give trigger warning there is like um suicide in it and um it, it deals kind of with a heavy team but it deals with everything very well. It's just it's just a very interesting book anyway, but just just go in knowing that. Um but I just I it was it was a really stunning book and I highly recommend it to everybody. Um so yeah, that is my favorite. <laughs> the next um book I read was The Tea Dragon Society. Finally. <laughs> you guys, I have been having I had this on my um, library book wish list for or on hold not my wish list like you don't want hold when you get it and um, there was so many people ahead of me but then it went off so I had to add it again and it went again and I had to add it again so I've been trying to get this goddamn book for ages so and it's a graphic novel oh what I meant to say is the Neil Gaiman one the book that I read was actually illustrated so it is a novel, it is a story, but um, the one, the edition I had from the library was illustrated and I highly recommend it. I love the illustrations. Anyway, back to the Tea Dragon Society. So it's about um, Greta who wants to, I think she's becoming a blacksmith, um, but then she meets or she finds a tea dragon and then she meets the people who care for them. And then like she wants to like get involved in that. And that's all I'll say because it is such a short book and if it's one um criticism I will give it is it was far too short I know that the next one I think is a bit longer which is good but um it was so short and I did not like that because I wanted more basically um but it was such a lovely story and uh, the artwork is amazing the little dragons oh my god they're so cute and the little bit in the back of the book which kind of gives you the history behind the tea dragons and all of that was really helpful and really nice to kind of read into it and that's why I wanted more like I would have read a big book about it like I just didn't want such a little book but I gave it five stars because I really really loved it I really enjoyed it um it was like an, a new little world that I was diving into and I can't wait to get the next one so I'm gonna put these ones 
I'm gonna put these ones together, but I read the end of I Hit Fairyland. So I had I Fit Fairyland volume three and four, and I found out that the fourth one was the last one, the final one, and I was so sad because this series was so fun and I loved it so much. And I really wish that um, Scott E. Young didn't end this because um, it's so good. Now I will say it is kind of open-ended. Um, Scotty could continue it at some point uh, if they wanted to, but I don't know. Um, it was a while ago that these were made, but basically I hit Fairyland Volume 3, Good Girl, basically, I think is the best one out of all of them. Um, it was just so good. There was something about it that just made it stand up um, uh, before all the rest of them. It was just so good. Um, I obviously can't really tell you in depth what it's about, but it's about Gert, and Gert gets sent to Fairyland when she's like, um, like what is she, like four or something years old, six or something like that. But she ends up um, not being able to find her way out of it. And she's now a 30 year old living in um, the body of like a six year old or whatever. And um, it is so well done. It is so funny. It is extremely gory and bloody. So keep that in mind. But um, I absolutely loved it. And like I said, the third one was absolutely my favorite and I gave it five stars. And I did, did give four stars to the final one which is called sadly never after now the reason i gave it that was because i felt that the ending was quite rushed and i didn't like the ending at all <laughs> i wasn't happy with it but i do understand where um they were going with it and it kind of felt like yeah that 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 would be the way it would end of course but i was hoping for something a bit more and we didn't really get that. So I do hope that in future maybe this will be continued or something because it's so good. Like it is really good. And I just feel like the ending was a bit bleh. But overall that whole series is amazing and I have to buy it all. It's so good. So the next book I read was The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. So um, this one I really wanted to read because um, one of Steve's favourite like series is um, Hellraiser. I have seen some of Hellraiser the first one but I haven't properly sat down and watched it so I'll have to do that soon but um, I got this from the library and um, I actually ended up really enjoying it. At first I really didn't like it because um, I found the characters that you're following to be extremely extremely unlikable and um but then it got to a point where it was like oh you're you're supposed to find them unlikable they're supposed to be like that so if you are reading this just hold out if you just find the characters really irritating and annoying um you're kind of supposed to find them that way <laughs> i did think that i would have liked more of the cinnabites and like more about their whatever they are but I do love that little introduction to them as well. They're not in it a whole lot in this book, but it's definitely worth reading for when they are in it, if that makes sense. Um, just overall, I did really like it. I gave it four stars. I definitely don't think it's the best of the best, but it's still really good. And it was really nice to read something spooky for October. And um, I would recommend it, and especially recommend it if you're a horror fan, definitely. I would, this would be one that you should put on the top of your list to read um, because it was very spooky. For anyone who doesn't know, the story is basically a puzzle box and I can't really give away much because it's such a short book. Like it, it is a novella, I think. It is a small book. So basically it's a puzzle box that if you open it a certain way, um, the Cenobites will visit you and they are, I, I don't even know what they are, if I'm honest. Are they gods or something? I don't know and you're supposed to like get something amazing from them or something and it doesn't go too right for somebody that's what I will say <laughs> anyway um yeah I, I definitely recommend it um if you like your horror so the final book that I read was again another library book I actually have it in this house somewhere but I cannot find it <laughs> oh wait it's not the final one actually ignore I said it the final one but I will talk about it now um I don't know where it is it's somewhere it's around somewhere but it is a small book this one it is short it's not too long actually can I see how many pages are in it it says here to just over 200 pages so it's very small okay it's about this is kind of difficult to say what it's about okay it's about Ada who is 
she's after being created by her father and her father also was created from the ground so they're made of the ground they're not human but they look human if that makes sense so Ada is still young and she has her father and they help cure cures they call human cures because they help cure them like so if you have a problem like a stomach problem a head problem I don't know you have problems okay and you go to them and they will help fix it and they kind of open you up it's really weird um all of that I absolutely love like doesn't that sound great like doesn't it sound amazing like the idea of it um the idea of whatever they are and how they help humans and like they're not human but you don't really know what they are and it's some tradition that's been going on for like hundreds of years and that is also interesting but that is where it stops for me um I felt that there was a lot lacking in this book and one of the main things is <sighs> this says it's an adult book right but this to me reads very much like young adult I'm trying to step away from young adult. Now saying that I did mark um, The Ocean at the End of the Lane as one of my all time favourites and I think that's young adult. But I'm trying to step away from it because the majority of what I'm reading and what is recommended by other people I am not enjoying at all and I think I've gone past that stage of young adult stuff. I don't know, it's hard, it's difficult. But basically to me this reads as young adult. I found that Ada, Ada has like um, a relationship with this human boy or man. I don't, do you know what? You're not told how old she is and you're not told how old he is either. And I couldn't figure it out. And it did make me uncomfortable at times because I saw her as a kind of a teenager, as somebody very young. So I just don't know. It just made me uncomfortable reading it a bit. And I felt like their romance wasn't anything amazing. Like for some reason she was just like in love with this guy for no reason. And it's like, I don't even know why because you're not telling me, you're not explaining to me why he is so amazing at all. Also the writing, um, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> is it called prose? I don't know enough about writing to be able to critique this, but I hate the way it was written. I just don't like when things are written kind of, I don't want to say like poetry, but you know when it's like written all like, um, oh, all fancy and like not whimsical, because I like whimsical, just in a certain way, and I don't like it, and I just want you to talk normal to me, okay? I just want you to be straightforward, especially for this book, and because it was so interesting. Um, but yeah, I just, I just didn't like it. I didn't like Ada at all. I didn't like her father. I didn't like the boyfriend. I didn't like any of the characters. Um, I liked nobody in this. I didn't care about what happened to any of them and I gave it two stars because I just wasn't into it. Um, it does seem to have really great reviews and I, yeah, maybe I'm missing something, but because it has such good reviews, I will say to you to try maybe read it if it's something that sounds interesting to you but for me there was just too many things that weren't working for me if that makes sense but we we'll leave that there anyway follow me to ground by Sue Rain Rains Rainsford um yeah not great but okay and the final book that I'm reviewing is who goes there? Um, so I actually have this by um, John W. Campbell. So basically, um, I got this out of the library because this includes the story of The Thing. So The Thing is one of my all-time favourite movies, is by John Carpenter, it is absolutely amazing. So it's based on this story that is in this book. So there are several stories in this book and the reason why I'm including it now is because I read Who Goes There, I read the first story and I don't really have... I don't really have it in me to read the rest of the book if I'm honest. So basically, um, I, I don't know if I can review this, I can't review this book as a whole because I didn't read the other stories and the reason I didn't read the other stories was because of the way it was written. It was written really oddly, um, it was very very hard to digest the way that it was written. The way that the characters speak to each other 
is not the way people speak to each other. Just, it's just not. At no point in our lives did we speak to each other like this. It's really bizarre and it's very hard, it's very hard to follow. And at times I only would read like three pages or something and I'd be like, I, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what they said. Um, it's very heavy on the science, but yet I don't know what they were talking about. <laughs> So basically, the thing um, or, and who goes there is about this team that are up in the Arctic and I, do you know what, I don't know what you call them, geologists or something, I don't know. They're up there, they're working in the Arctic, they know things about stuff, okay, about old ice and stuff. They dig up something and um, they have an argument over whether or not they should let this thing defrost basically um to study it and stuff and you know they have that little argument whatever but then it escapes and what it can do is it can imitate any living form so it can imitate you or me but it can be a perfect imitation to the point where you wouldn't know if you were an imitation or if somebody else was an imitation i mean that idea as a whole is absolutely incredible, amazing that he taught a lot. It is so terrifying. Like when you do kind of get the bits where they're kind of discussing it and like, how would you know? How would you know if somebody was an image? Like there's no way you would know. So they're trying to figure out tests and things like that. And that's where kind of the science things come in. But just the conversations that they have and the way to speak to each other is not normal, I don't think. Um, if anyone else has read this, please let me know. Um, so basically, I read it, I, I'm i on the middle way. I give it three stars because I don't think it's the worst thing I've ever read at, at any mile. But it just was hard to follow. And then just that idea, that idea is amazing. That's why the Ting film is so brilliant. I feel like the film really set in place and got rid of kind of some of the stuff that was in this that was just not working. Like the language, whatever the hell, I the way they're talking to each other. I just can't describe it other than a lot of the sentences and a lot of the words to each other just didn't make sense to me. And I'm not too sure what that is. Um, if anybody knows, I don't know. Like when was this written? In the A, oh no. Oh, it was written like in the 40, 30s. Was it? Hang on, I thought this was written in like the 60s or something. Okay, I need to find specifically when this was written because that could be why it sounds so weird. Yeah, they're talking to each other too well. I think that might be it just in that different way. But anyway, that is why I don't want to continue reading this because I have no interest in the other stories for, for now anyway. And I just don't want to read it because it was so difficult to read the story that I, I actually like love, um, you know, the idea of or whatever. But to read the other ones that I don't even know anything about, like going in blind, I'd be like, what is happening? I don't know. So um, I will see. I still have it. Obviously, it's from the library. The library is closed now because of lockdown. So we'll just see what happens. I may read it. I may not. But I'm including it now because I probably won't. So that's all the books for October. My favourite and the one that I recommend the most, obviously, is The Ocean at the End of the Lane. Absolutely fantastic. Please do read it. My least, the one I disliked the most was following me to ground, but I do think maybe it's just not aimed for me. There was just things in it that, that I didn't enjoy personally, um, but you might. So um, yeah, it's up to you. Let me know what you read for October because I wanted to read a lot more and I wanted to read a lot more horror and spookiness and I didn't get that. But let me know what you read and especially if it was horror or anything like that because I want recommendations and stuff. 
And um, yeah, I want to say thank you so much to my $5 Patreons, to Cheryl, to Linda and to Michelle. Michelle is my newest one. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. We're like have a little, we have a little family now of Patreons. It's so cute. Um, so thank you so much for um, signing up. And if you want to check out my Patreon, please do. I will link it below. And um, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.